several years ago, a good friend of mine encouraged me to say yes to getting to teach meditation at a yoga festival. Everyone on this call might be familiar with her. Her name is Allison Barr. Allison pushed me to say yes to this challenge. I felt inadequate and unprepared, but also it was something that I wanted to be doing more of. I was chosen, I got to go to snow mass and teach yoga, or excuse me, teach meditation at a yoga festival. And we had a beautiful location called the quiet spot for this meditation to take place. Show of hands, who has been to a ski town in the summer? If you've been to a ski town in the summer, what you might recognize is that is when all of the construction happens. It's when they repave and resurface roads. It's when they build. It's when they remodel. It's when they fix windows. It's when they do all of the chores and jobs that you can't do when the mountain is under snow. Consequently, it's loud. You tend to be in a bowl. Snow mass was certainly in a bowl. And so it's echoing all of the hammers and saws. Compound it with the quiet spot was located directly next to where the staging equipment was located. So add to that all of the heavy equipment that's beeping and loading and moving throughout the entire time. Needless to say, it was anything but quiet. However, it ended up being a dynamic opportunity to notice external noise as the internal metaphor, mind chatter recognizing how consistent and persistent that pertinacious little voice of ours can be when perhaps you're trying to quiet your mind. Only internally recognizing our own mind chatter can be difficult, but having a persistent external noise allowed it to be highlighted in a really dynamic way for the meditation. Last week I was walking Charlie, my little pup dog, and the leaves have been starting to fall. And there's these giant, um, I can't think of what kind of tree they are right now, but big leaves that would clearly cover your face. And I was looking at these leaves and I started thinking, isn't it interesting, wouldn't that be like nature's mask? I don't know if any of you are familiar with this. My guess is a lot of you are. But this has become the norm for a lot of us. <laughs> it's super fun. My glasses are fogging up right now as I'm speaking. I have a feeling my voice is muffled, at least it is inside of my own head. I can compliment the fabric choice. It fits so nice. I love the mask you're wearing. But it's become an obvious example of something most of us are having to deal with at the moment. Playing on this double-edged metaphor of quiet spot construction noise, I started looking at how often are we wearing masks in our day-to-day -day life? The external COVID mask is obviously noticeable. I never know, or excuse me, I always know that I have that mask on my face. But the internal masks that we wear, those masks that allow us to keep face and to cover ourselves up, can be a little bit more discreet. For instance, I might pull out some mala beads. And in this case, you know I'm clearly spiritual. I do my meditation. I can wear a mask by wearing makeup, cover myself up. I can have some more damaging masks like holding on to roles that no longer serve me. My point is that masks are not bad. Masks are created at a time in our lives when perhaps we were feeling insecure, self-conscious. Uh, self they, they are not intended to harm us necessarily. But the question is, are they serving us? So even though they may have been created at a time when it was beneficial for us, it helped us to present ourselves in a way that perhaps moved us forward, they can become a double-edged sword. What at one time was a benefit for us can flop onto the other time and become our most, our uh, biggest adversary, internal advers adversary, <laughs> pertinacious little masks that they are. So I took to asking myself some questions. 
Is this mask serving me or is it diminishing me? What does that mean? Is the mask supporting me in my values? Is it supporting me in the way that I want to authentically be showing up or is it at odds with my values? An example of this was years ago, but don't tell anybody outside of this room. YouTube's going to know it, Julie. I used to smoke a lot of weed. Please don't judge me or do. I don't care. But at some point, I had to start asking myself, is this serving me? I wanted to meet people. I wanted to be able to be moving into a different position. And I didn't want to meet them when I was stoned, but I was smoking weed all the time. So that mask of keeping this identity of not caring was really preventing me from the caring that I wanted to do. So I quit because it was at odds with the value. I wanted connection and then I was using a substance that was keeping me disconnected. The double-edged swords that we carry with us, the masks that we carry, sometimes they're obvious. They muffle our voices but sometimes they're not obvious and they might muffle our voices that are internally guiding us into different ways of being. Joseph Campbell, one of his quotes is, the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. So while the masks may serve us at one point, I challenge you to ask yourself if that mask is still serving you at this point. Thank you.